Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at a few examples of uh, different kinds of patterns of inheritance and seeing how we can find those in our pedigrees. So let's go ahead and start with autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance. So if we have a um, pedigree, now this is just one little like family cross, like generally speaking, pedigrees will be much larger, but within that pedigree, you can look for different crosses and their outcomes to try and give you clues for how the trait is inherited. So um, first we're gonna determine if the trait is dominant or recessive, and then if it's autosomal or sex linked. So here, um, I like to look for crosses, like two parents that have offspring that differ from those parents. Um, and that gives you some information. So here, this first offspring, or the female in generation two is my clue. So I like to start with, okay, um to like figure out if it is dominant or recessive let's just pretend that uh both parents like this is a recessive trait if this was a recessive trait then that means both parents in the first generation would be homozygous recessive if the trait was recessive however would it be possible for two homozygous recessive individuals to have a child that has a dominant phenotype no, this trait, that is not possible. So therefore we can eliminate recessive as, a, as an option. But let's just double check. Does it work, this pedigree work if the trait is a dominant trait? Okay, let's see. Could two parents, both with the dominant phenotype, have a child who is homozygous recessive? And the answer is yes. Like two brown-eyed parents could have a blue-eyed offspring. Uh, if they were both heterozygous, you'd expect a three to one ratio. And actually it kind of bothers me right here. We don't know what this second allele is. This offspring could be homozygous dominant or heterozygous, just to be clear. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, continue. So now our next question though, we've confirmed this is a dominant trait and all of the shaded in individuals um, express the dominant trait and have at least one dominant allele but is it autosomal or is it sex linked? And this is where I like to start with like a female or a male, but usually like a female because then you know the female got one X from her mom and one X from her dad. So it kind of is a good like clue or um, piece of the puzzle to compare the daughter to her father because fathers only have one X and you know he's gonna give, it, give that X, like pass it on to his daughter. So let's go ahead and see. So the son, we know the trait is dominant. So that means he has to have a dominant allele on his X if this was a sex linked trait. And the mom also has the trait. So it makes sense. The mom gives X's to sons and daughters, but the son only gets his X from his mother. And in this example, that would be possible. But now let's look at the daughter. The daughter, in order for her to not have the trait, she would have to be homozygous recessive, which means both of her exes, one from her mother and one from her father, would both have to carry the recessive allele. Now from her mother, the mother's second ex very well could be a, a recessive allele, but the father has the dominant trait. So if it was sex linked, that would mean that this father has to have the dominant allele on his X chromosome. And that means he would absolutely be passing it to his daughter. But in this case, she doesn't have a dominant X allele. And therefore we know that this trait cannot be sex linked as shown. So therefore we can determine, yes, it's an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance. Okay, so let's go ahead and see this. Uh, when you see something like this, where they have a lot of offspring and they all have the trait and the two parents are different, then that's a sign that one of the parents uh, is homozygous dominant, meaning that every single gamete that parent made was carrying that dominant allele and every single offspring inherited it. So if this was a dominant trait, uh, that means that the mother in the uh, first generation would be homozygous recessive. And all of their F1, all of that uh, generation there, uh, would be heterozygous. Okay, um, but how do we know if it's sex linked or if it's autosomal dominant? So here we know like it's a dominant trait because all of the offspring inherited it, but how do we know if it's sex linked? 
Okay, I want you to think for a second. If this was a sex-linked dominant trait, think about the parent's genotypes, okay? Now I want you to think about how these X's are passed to daughters and sons. And I want you to think about how would this second generation be different if it was sex-linked? Well, if it was sex-linked, the second generation, all of the daughters would inherit the dominant allele from the father, but all of the sons would inherit the recessive allele from the mother because sons only get one X and they get it from their mother. So if their mother's homozygous recessive, that means all of the males will also have the recessive phenotype. But because to have a dominant phenotype, you only need one copy of an allele, that father is gonna pass his dominant X allele to all of his daughters. And therefore they would all be heterozygous and all express this trait. So that is basically, if we saw this um, here, how we can confirm that this is an autosomal dominant trait um, and not a sex linked because it would be very different um, in their offspring. The pattern between male and female offspring would be very distinct. Okay, um, all right, so let's go ahead and look at, uh, so I guess, can I just summarize real fast? I'm so sorry. So to summarize, one of the clues that a trait is dominant is this um, here. Yes, when you have that one child without it, that's like saying two brown-eyed parents have a blue-eyed offspring. That blue-eyed offspring doesn't have brown eyes. Like that's a sign that this is a, um, a dominantly inherited trait. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so now let's go ahead and look at an example or some clues of things you can look for to see if a trait is autosomal recessive. So just like that one offspring was a clue in the autosomal dominant, it also can be a clue in autosomal recessive. So here, um, when we think about this, well, this trait, um, this is our offspring that gives us our clue. So here, uh, if this was a recessive trait that you're like hypothesizing, when we like just make guesses about the parents, yeah, we can see that two heterozygotes can have a homozygous recessive offspring. So, and from just the previous example, we know that um, the trait cannot be dominant. Uh, because two recessive parents can't have a dominant offspring. So basically we can eliminate dominant as a possibility um, of that uh, female in generation two. Now, so it's recessive. Uh, and our next step though, is it autosomal or is it sex linked? So just like before, if it's a recessive trait, she had to have gotten that X from her dad. And if it was recessive X linked, then you would expect to see the dad um, at least shaded in. But if, if the dad was shaded in and this was your only clue right here, that would not be enough to say, oh, it's sex linked. You'd have to look for a little bit more in the larger pedigree to confirm one way or another. But here, the fact that the dad is not shaded in tells us he has that dominant allele and therefore uh, it can't be sex linked recessive because where did she get that other recessive X from? Okay. So here we can say uh, that this is an autosomal recessive uh, inheritance. Okay, so really like this uh, one child having the trait when both don't is one of the clues that it's going to be recessive. Um, but now what if it was one of the sons that was affected with the trait, right? Like, could you still rule out sex linked? Like in this example, we eliminated sex linked as an option. But here we can't so much because what if the mom was heterozygous? right? Like that wouldn't be enough information to say conclusively one way or the other if it was an autosomal recessive or a sex linked recessive. You would need more crosses and more information and you'd have to look at a couple other uh, like matings to see uh, one way or the other. Okay. All right. All right. So now let's look at uh, sex linked dominance and what that would look like as clues. Okay. So let's pretend we have these two parents. And if this was a sex-linked dominant uh, trait, that means that this father would be X dominant allele Y. Now the wife not having the trait would be homozygous recessive. So when we look at their offspring, uh, none of their sons would have it, but all of their daughters would because every daughter inherits that dominant X from their father. So when you see differences between males and females, like it is not even, um, like it's either like all the males have it or all the females have it. You wanna like look into, is it a sex-linked pattern of inheritance or 
is it just by chance that the males and females ended out that way? Um, and so uh, sometimes if you see a distinct difference in males versus females um, expressing a trait, you wanna research more, is it um, sex linked or not? So here, let's say that this mother, um, this female in generation two um, mates and has offspring. Um, and we see here, oh, like this one doesn't really have, it's 50-50, like a daughter and a son and a daughter and a son, right? So here though, would the sex linked pattern of inheritance still match and still work? And the answer is yes, because here, this mother, if it's sex linked dominant, half of her children will inherit this dominant X and half of her children will inherit the recessive X, um, kind of like regardless of what the father is, is donating. And so here you can see like this daughter inherited the dominant X, whereas this daughter inherited the recessive X from the mom, but then they both got that recessive um, allele from the father. Okay, and then the sons were 50-50 because the mom has two X's. So if you have a heterozygous mother, then half of her sons will inherit it and half of them won't. Okay, so that's for sex linked dominant. Um, now let's go ahead. Now, if the female though was homozygous dominant on her exes, then you can imagine that's all she has to give all of her offspring. Every single one of her offspring, male and female, would all inherit that um, dominant X allele. And then it would be very hard to determine if it was a sex linked or autosomal. Because look at this one from previously. Like, you can't really confirm one way or the other. So you'd have to look for more information to say with certainty if it was sex linked or um, autosomal. Okay, and now if the mom was heterozygous though, um, which I think uh, here, if she was heterozygous, you would expect about like half her children to inherit that X with the dominant uh, allele and half her children to inherit it without. So again, this, um, this though, doesn't this kind of look like it could be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive, like something like this where you see the children are half and half um, makes it tough. You'd have to look for other crosses and other clues. Okay, this would be tough if you were only presented with this. Okay, um, so now let's go ahead and I think I have a little bit more, maybe. Oh, so what happens if it's sex linked recessive, which thinks our last pattern to look at. So here, if it was sex linked recessive, we saw this one earlier. So one clue is, um, uh, if it was sex linked recessive, oh, I guess here I have it predominant. So here though, if this mother was sex was recessive, then here you would be able to see. So I guess I should have had these uh, filled in differently. I should have had all the female filled in um, as recessive and then all of the sons filled in. So, oh, I messed this one up a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, but now let's go ahead and look at this one here. Uh, so what we see, we see, uh, we want to think, is this dominant or recessive? So our first offspring to give us some clues is this one. So because of this offspring here, oops, I circled it. Uh, this offspring here tells us that it's a recessive trait because neither parent has the phenotype, but they have an offspring with it. That is only possible if, if the parents are like heterozygous or carriers and can pass that allele on to their child. So here uh, we have a child that's recessive. Now, the next job then would be to figure out is it autosomal or is it sex linked? So here, I also noticed that, that the grandma in generation one has it and it's only sons who do in the second and third generation. That's a little bit of a clue that it may be sex linked and it's up to you to do process of elimination to figure out if it is. But when you see a disproportionate amount of male offspring having the trait, then that is a sign possibly that it's sex linked. It's not the, like, you don't want to automatically jump to conclusions. Oh, sex linked recessive, done. You kind of want to double check things. Okay. So here though, um, what, what does that say? But is it odd? Is it more? Is it sex linked? So let's go ahead and see. So that's just what I said out loud. So if it was autosomal, uh, I'm sorry, if it was sex linked recessive, that means that the male in generation one would have to have the dominant allele because he doesn't express the trait. Now, if it's sex linked recessive, that means that this female is homozygous recessive. So in our first, I'm sorry, our second generation, does this match what we'd expect? Like, does this follow um, the pattern of inheritance? Well, let's see. So if the males only inherit X's from their mothers, then yeah, look, their mothers, their mother, then here we see both the males inherited that recessive X. 
and females get an X from their mom and an X from their dad. So for these females, they each inherited that dominant allele from their father. So all of them have at least one dominant allele, so they do not express the trait. Now, if we look at the, um, the marriage in generation two, and what we see over here is that this male does not, like this male, does not have the trait. So he also has that dominant allele on his X. When they have children, he is passing his Y onto his sons and the, the two sons in generation three are getting their X's from their mother. And because the mother's gametes um, only carry one X, when these X's separate, um, you would expect a 50-50 chance that a son will have this recessive trait. And that's what we see. Uh, one son inherits the uh, recessive allele where the other son inherits the dominant allele. So this uh, pattern of inheritance of sex linked recessive would work in this pedigree. Now, would this work as a just a general autosomal recessive um, pedigree? Sure, like if you just did like a homozygous recessive here, and then like a, um, homo a heterozygote here, these very easily could be your two like this, and this could be heterozygous, like it could work out this way. Um, but generally speaking, the fact that it's only males that express the trait is giving us that is your clue that it's sex linked recessive and not autosomal. Okay, uh, good job. I think that's it. Yep, great.